heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Cause your name is power Your name is healing
Father, Lord, I ask that you just come into this place right now. You fill us with your peace and your love that surpasses all understanding. And you remind us of the season that we're about to enter into, the season where we were, are remem we are reminded of your grace and how you sent your son to die for us even when we didn't deserve it, even in times where we haven't accepted it, even in times where we've went away and strayed away and sinned against you, Lord, you still came and you sent your son on the cross and you said, I will die for whoever wants to seek after me, whoever will answer that door that I keep knocking at, that heart that I keep pursuing. Lord, you come into our presence and you ask us just to accept your love, just to accept your grace and your peace that surpasses all understanding. And as we walk on this earth, this world full of sin and hatred and, and desire and temptation, I ask that you take each and every youth here from sixth grade all the way up until senior year, Lord, I ask that you take them and you show them your love and your grace and your mercy and all things that surpass all understanding that is in your character and in your love for us, Lord. That even in those seasons of doubt, even in those valleys, Lord, you will show us the mountaintops, that you will remember, remind us that you walk with us through those valleys and then you take us up to these mountaintops and we see all that you're doing in our life and all that you will do and the path that you have before us. So Lord, as we enter into this next season of worship, as we listen to the speaker, Lord, I ask that you just remind us, what, what can I do for you? As a servant for you, as a heart that seeks after you, as somebody who wants to follow you wholeheartedly into this next chapter of our lives, Lord, I ask that you take this next moment for us to open our ears, to hear what you have for us and to see what you have in store in the path and the purpose you have in store for us. And in Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Hey, um, I'm Joel. For those of you who don't know who I am, um, sixth grade boys probably know who I am, but dread me coming to small groups, so it's all right. It's fine. Um, but hey, we're, we are finishing up the book of Daniel tonight. Um, we just got through last week the lion's den um, where God delivered Daniel out of the, the den where, where he had been put because of his decision to follow God. Um, and that's chapter 6. Uh, if you've got your Bible, we're going to be going to chapter 7 tonight, okay? Right after that. Right after this just uh, had to be, if you weren't in Daniel's shoes, uh, didn't have Daniel's faith, just a terrifying experience. Daniel then goes home and he goes to sleep. And he has a dream. And then another dream, then another dream. And basically, the rest of Daniel is visions and prophecy that God has given him. And it gets wild. I mean, I mean, start reading in, in, in chapter 7, verse 1, and what you see is like these four creatures, and they've got wings, but they're also like lions, and they've got like ten horns. I mean, you start, you start reading through this, and what you see is like some sort of radioactive experiment gone wrong. Um, but then, then we come to Daniel 7, verse, er, verses 13 and 14. Uh, and you'll see it up on the screen. Uh, and Daniel, having another one of his dreams during the night, a vision, he says this. He says, as my vision continued that night, I saw someone like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient one and he led into his presence. He was given authority and honor and sovereignty over all the nations of the world so that people of every race and nation and language would obey him. His rule is eternal. It will never end. His kingdom will never be destroyed. Um, this, for those of you who don't know, is a prophecy given to Daniel, okay? Uh, prophecy is something that is forward-looking, okay? It's something that is going to happen in the future. Um, much of prophecy came because uh, God wanted to show his people hope. He wanted to give them a promise of something better to come, okay? And here we see it. We, we, we see that son of man, and that son of man is Jesus, we just sang about him uh, on that third song. I want to speak the name of, anybody? Oh, okay, good, yeah, yeah, okay, you are following along. Great, yeah, Jesus. Um, and what we see here, we see, we see three key things about Jesus who is yet to come on earth, okay? Uh, first and foremost, Jesus is the son of man who is a ruler king, 
okay? He, he, he's got authority, he's got sovereignty, he's got dominion, he's got all these things, and well, most importantly, he's got a kingdom, so he's obviously a king. Um, but he's a king. On top of that, uh, all people are going to be serving him. Uh, what he uses there is peoples, though, so it's a plural of people, so, like, think people groups, okay? Um, I, mean, I mean, obviously, I mean, we sit, we sit in this church, uh, and you see around you, you see Christians sitting and listening, and, but you don't see, you know, your entire school here, right? Because it's, it's not all people, it's all people groups. Because we, as people, have a choice whether or not to follow him. Three, uh, his kingdom is everlasting. An everlasting kingdom. Something that has never once happened on this earth. You can look through history and you will see kingdoms rise and fall and rise and fall. Rome, one of, one of the largest kingdoms of, of this time, well, actually after this time, but during the time of Jesus, I mean, it, it was a massive kingdom that eventually deteriorated and de- deteriorated until it finally just ceased to exist. Um, but this, this is a promise of a kingdom that will never end, that will last forever. Um, so that's what we see of Jesus here in Daniel. Um, but as I was reading, I was like, oh, okay, this is cool and such. And then I was like, wait a second, I've heard this before. Um, and and I've, I've heard it in the New Testament. So Daniel, written in the Old Testament, it's like, hold on one sec. It's like almost exactly... That much of the Bible, that part right there, okay? Old Testament. And I was like, well, I've heard this in the New Testament. New Testament's this side right here. Um, and I was like, and it's, 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 it's a very common thing. And in fact, as I was reading through this, I was like, Gavin taught about this last week. It's in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Jesus, who is ascending into the clouds, um, gives a final command to his disciples. And he says, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands that I've given you and be sure of this. I am with you always to the end of the age. I mean, did you hear that? Did you hear that? I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Okay, so he's got, he's got all this authority. So obviously, he's a ruler king. Uh, next, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them, teach these newest disciples to obey all the commands that I've given you. Okay, so it's it's people who are serving Him and obeying Him, uh, which you know is exactly what we said earlier. And three, uh, and be sure of this: I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That's an everlasting kingdom. Jesus almost basically just quoted Daniel seven here. And this is, this, is, this is written hundreds and hundreds of years later, but it, it's, it's showing Jesus here fulfilling the prophecy that God had set out. Um, now, here's the thing. This is not what people expected. They did not expect Jesus, okay? Because how, how, how did Jesus, uh, you know, like, save everyone or, or offer salvation for everyone? Anyone, 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 anyone? Oh, yeah, wait in the back. You got to be really loud so it picks up right here. That's okay. I'll cover you. That's fine. I got you. Uh, he died on the cross, right? He died a death. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. I just couldn't hear you. didn't pick up. Sorry. But yeah, he died. And like, that's, that's not what you think when someone's going to, you know, give you salvation. If someone's going to save you because you're trapped by like enemies, right? You expect him to be coming like riding in on a white horse or something and like have a giant sword and like really big muscles and such and like just slashing your enemies down, right? That's salvation, not someone dying. And that's exactly what the Jews expected. The Jews expected a Messiah, someone, a savior who would come in like a white horse and such. And since the Romans were there, you know, lording over them and, and, and bossing them around and such, they were hoping for someone who would come in, lead a massive army, get rid of Rome. Israel would be fine and safe and everything would be dandy. Instead, instead they get someone who dies on the cross. And not only that, but they put Jesus on the cross because they didn't like what he was, what he was teaching and that's their savior, that guy they just put on the cross. Mm. Um, you know, this, this, this teaches me this profound statement. God's plans are unpredictable. God gave you a prophecy. He gave you a promise. 
He gave them a promise, and it was like, yeah, okay, cool. Someone's going to save us, and it's going to be great and hunky-dory. Um, but it's nowhere near what they expected. Not even close. Um, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says this. It says, God speaking here, he says, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. There it is. Um, I mean, it's God saying, hey, you don't think like me. You can't outmaneuver me. You can't force me into what you want me to do. That's not how this works. I am your creator, and I have a plan, because God has a plan, but it's not And this is so important for us. It is not your plan. That's a tough, that is a very tough statement to swallow. I mean, people tell you, like, make the most of life. Do what you want to do. Be who you want to be. And God's like, I have given you that choice, yes. But I'm offering you something better. And much of the time, we still choose to do our own thing, to follow our own plan. Or or maybe, maybe you feel as though you don't have a choice to follow God because your parents are telling you to do something else, or your friends are encouraging you to be doing something else. Hmm. Um, But it's a simple truth. And like, and we we even get to see, we even get to see what God's master plan is, what, what, what his vision of what man is to be doing, okay? And we we see it at the very beginning of the Bible. We see it in Genesis chapter 3, and it says this. But sadly, as we were about to read this, it, it, it actually shows the fall of man, which is not God's plan. But we get to see just just a sliver of God's plan in it. And it says, it says, The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord had made. One day he asked the woman, Eve, Did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Eve replied, of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said, you must not eat of this or touch it. If you do, you will die. The serpent was like, ah, you're not going to die. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. She took some of the fruit and ate it, and then she gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were opened, and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness, because, you know, they were naked, because they were innocent. They didn't didn't know that that was wrong. So they they sewed fig, fig leaves together to cover themselves when the cool evening breezes were blowing The man and the wife heard the Lord walking about in the garden. So they hid. They hid from the Lord among the trees. Then the Lord called to them and said, Where are you at? And Adam Adam replied, and he said, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Who told who and God God replies, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? The man replied, It was the woman that you you gave me who gave me the fruit, and I ate it. Then the Lord asked the woman, What have you done? The, The serpent deceived me, she replied. That's why I ate it. Then the Lord said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the animals, domestic and wild. You will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust, as long as you live, And I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Okay, 15 verses. Okay, that was quite a bit. But did you see God's plan in there? It's about like this big in there, okay? What we see, if we go back two slides... Uh, yeah, that's good. Okay, yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay, uh, there at the bottom, like two sentences up, it says, when the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord walking about in the garden. Let me ask you this. Um, 
if, do you have any idea what it would sound like, God walking in a garden? Anybody? I don't know if it'd be like a boom, 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 or like a chicka, 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 chicka. I have no idea. But Adam and Eve knew. Adam and Eve knew because they heard him, and they were like, oh, that's God. Uh, we've done something wrong, and we need to hide. What I learned from that is that they've walked with God before. They knew what God sounded like because they've walked with him before. Man, what a powerful image. The creator of the universe, the creator of you, is walking side by side with you in this garden, this, this perfect paradise that, 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 that has, has no pain, there are no tears, there is nothing wrong with it whatsoever, there's, there's no drama at all, it's, 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 it's perfect. You and, you and your creator is walking side by side, and yet, yet Adam and Eve decided to do the one thing that would get them separated from that experience, from that relationship. But that was God's plan. God's plan for man is to walk with him. But, you know, we messed it up. It happens. Uh, but the good news is, is, that, is that God had a plan. If you go two slides again, back to where we were. Oh, sorry, back one. There it is, just one. Okay, cool. Uh, we, see, we see God's plan already being revealed. I mean, even right here, just as this incident has happened, God is already showing his plan to bring man back to him. He says this, he says, and I will cause hostility between you and the woman, talking to, you know, the devil, serpent, and between your offspring and her offspring, he will strike your head. In other words, you're going to be dead, and you will strike his heel. In other words, he's going to get hurt from it. Okay, what do we see? Well, we see Jesus on the cross, beating sin and death, and then rising from the dead. And the devil's beat. He can't do anything about it. Now, like, you know, Jesus did die, but he raised from it. He beat that. So, you know, his heel was bruised, but you know, no big deal. Okay? All right. Now, that's not the only time. God, God reveals his plan, once again, throughout the entire Old Testament, okay? This whole thing, we, 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 we see... Just keep drawing this stuff. You see God's plan being revealed through here. I mean, I mean, Jesus is just smattered all over uh, the Old Testament. We, we can look at it uh, in Genesis 12, okay? So uh, Adam and Eve leave the garden. They go. They have some kids. The kids mess up. It happens. Uh, I can't wait. Uh, I, can't, I can wait for Zipporah to mess up, my daughter, but, you know, I don't want her to mess up, but it's going to happen. And I dread it. Um, I'm, I'm kidding. She's already a sinner. She tells me no all the time. I'm supposed to obey your parents. Um, anyways, um, but they have some kids, those kids have other kids, those kid ha kids have more kids, and we get down to this guy by the name of Abraham, a direct descendant of Adam, okay? Um, Ab Abram, Abraham, he has his name interchangeable there. Um, but God is like, Abraham, hey, good news, um, I've chosen you to... Uh, to be basically the father of all my people. Um, if anyone's going like, Father Abraham had many sons, many sons had Father Abraham. Yeah, this Abraham. And, he, and he, he starts like just listing off these blessings that he's gonna have. I mean, he's gonna have tons of kids. Uh, he's gonna, any, anyone who, who blesses him, God's gonna bless them. Uh, but then he gets to this very last blessing in Genesis 12, 3, and it says this. He says, all families on earth will be blessed through you. So not even your kids, but everybody's going to be blessed through you. And what we find is that Abraham is the ancestor of this fellow named Jesus. Yeah, yeah, he, he showed up again. Jesus, once again, is being shown here to be the one who's going to be blessing all the nations because he's going to offer salvation for anyone? Everybody. Everybody. Thank you. Excellent. Good. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, but there's more. There's always more. Um, let's, let's go to Hosea, okay? Um, Sunday school was just in Hosea, so it was on my mind while I was going through my study. Um, and I was like, man, that's a, that's a Jesus sighting again. Okay, so here we go. So, but I will show love to the people Judah. I will free them from their enemies, not with weapons and armies and ho or horses or charioteers, but by my power as the Lord their God. Does anyone want to guess how he does this? 
Jesus. That side's paying attention this time. Yeah, yeah. See, uh, here's the crazy part, okay? The people of Judah, okay, is a tribe of Israel, also known as the Jews, okay? That, the guy in Judah, there was a fellow there, a king actually by the name of Daniel. Daniel is a descendant of Abraham. Jesus is a descendant of Dan, uh, of, of Dan not Daniel, whoa, David, sorry. Forget about Daniel for now. We'll come back to him later. Um, David, and Jesus is the descendant of Data, who, David, who belongs to the tribe of Judah. And um, you might want to guess how he saved him. It's not by weapons, not by armies or horses or charioteers, but by the power of God, by raising from the dead after he died on the cross for our sins. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. What we learn from this is that God was making promises all the way throughout the Old Testament, and every single one of those promises he kept, because God always keeps his promises. Okay? Plain and simple. Focus on this truth. Focus on the, on the idea that God always keeps his promises, because, because God has made promises to you. I mean, we, 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 we will see it here in just like 13 more slides. No, not that many slides. I don't have that many slides. Um, but anyways, so, turn my page so I can follow along with myself. Okay. Here we go. So we know he keeps his promises. We know that he has his plan. But what's, and we know that his plan is unpredictable. But what is striking to me is that this all-powerful God, this creator of the universe, decides to do something, once again, unpredictable, okay? Um, let's go to the next slide. So, Daniel, Matthew. Jesus was given authority, honor, and sovereignty over all the nations of the world. Jesus came and told his disciples, I've, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Boom, okay, next. So, that people of every race and nation and language would obey him. Jesus says, therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. Okay. It goes on. I mean, I mean, I mean this is lining up perfectly. Daniel, again, his rule is eternal, and it will never end. His kingdom will never be destroyed. Jesus, and be sure of this, I am with you always to the end of the age. Once again, a promise. Uh, go back one slide, though. This is the un unexpected part, right here. I mean, God could do this any way he wanted. He could, he could make it so that people of every race and nation and language would obey him. Anyway, I mean, I mean he could be like, obey me. And you'd have to be forced to be like, okay, it's going to be good. Um, but he doesn't. He doesn't. Instead, instead, he does something unpredictable. He Ask us, he has us participate in his plan. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything that I have commanded you. We get to participate in God's plan. Hmm. What's, what's, even, what's even more fascinating is that Whereas, whereas we saw God walking with Adam and Eve in Genesis, here in Matthew and Mark and Luke and John, the Gospels where we see Jesus, Jesus' ministry here on earth, we see Jesus, who is part of God, walking with his disciples. We see a very small part of the Garden of Eden back in Genesis here in the Gospels because Jesus is walking with man. Let's go, let's go forward to so God wants us to participate. God wants us to participate because he, his, his entire plan is to restore us back into the, to the point to where God is walking with us. I mean, we see this all the way in the end of the Bible. The very last book of the Bible is Revelation. And once again, it's just, it's just like the wild um, stuff that you read in and Daniel, all this, all this prophetic literature, there's, there's, there's all kinds of stuff. There's like this giant woman with like wine, and she's spilling it all over the place, and there's more radioactive animals. But at the very end, what is said is 
you see earth and you see all the sin, everything in it being destroyed. And then you see this giant city, which is heaven, okay? And this, 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 this heaven is coming down, and it's like big and sloppy and wet. It's like a giant kiss, you know? Um, and it's heaven meeting earth. What? Sorry, I thought I heard something. Anyways, it's fine. Um, but, it, but it's heaven meeting earth again. It's, it's God coming back to literally be walking with us. But I mean, it, it doesn't stop there. It, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, we don't have to wait on that because we can walk with God here and now and today. Okay? Um, because God is calling us to participate in his plan. The question is, where are you in God's plan? Um, as Joel comes up and starts to play, um, where are you in God's plan? Are, are, are you at the point to where, to where you, you, you are, you're walking with him daily, where, where, you, where you've been called and you understand it to, to, to go and make disciples? I mean, I mean there, are, there are those of you who are bringing, bringing friends here uh, so that they can hear God's word and be filled with it as well. I mean, I mean that's amazing, and, and that's, that's what we're called to do. Um, but, but there's some of you who, who have no idea who this God is. You, you, you haven't fully committed to a relationship with him. You haven't answered his call to say, hey, uh, you should really accept my son because you know, then we can live in a perfect relationship unlike any of the relationships you've experienced before. Any of the toxic ones, any, any, any of the ones where your friends or your significant other is sitting next to you and distracting you the entire time during service. I mean, it's, gonna be, it's better than all those relationships. And he's asking like, hey, are, are you gonna come or not? It's up to you. I, I've done the work. All you got to do is say yes. Um, leaders, if you want to come up and go to the back, um, we're, we're going we're to do this. And, and I, I, hope, I hope that God has, has caught your heart tonight. I mean, I, I, I hope that I, just like the song that we just sang, um, where, where God, Jesus' name has been spoken over you tonight that God has given you an understanding of who Jesus is and what is so important about being with him and being in the right position with him. Um, I love this scripture. It's James 5, 13 through 16. It is, it is something that many of us struggle with so much because it's, it's just not comfortable. It's not something that we want to do. Um, but it says this, it says, are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with the oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. So confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. See, the, these leaders who are up here and who are in the back, they're, they're not here to judge you. They're not here to be like, why did you do that? No, 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 no. They're, they're here to pray for you, to support you. Guys, life is tough. And if your life's going perfect, I mean, good for you, but it's not. You're just fooling yourself. Because, I mean, as we saw, the, the only perfect life is one spent in Jesus and God and, and walking with him daily. These, these leaders are here to pray for you. That's why we're here, guys, because we love you, because God loved us first, okay? So, question again, where are you in God's plan? Has there, has there been a sin where that has, that has just taken over your life, even though you're, you're already a follower of, of, of Jesus? You've, you've given in to this, this, whether it be peer pressure or just an addiction. I mean, Come to us, grab a friend, come to the altar and, and just, just let your heart be broken to God. Because he loves you. 